Hello everyone, I am Loki616 and I am here playing some Goddess. Right, this game came out last night uh, onto Steam Early Access and anyone who was getting beta codes. The alpha's obviously been out for a little while if you're following. Uh, if you've never heard of this, this is the new God game by um, Peter Molyneux. He's decided he wants to do a new God game and I was a big fan of the Black and White series. Um, so I decided I would come and have a little look-see. Um, right then, so let's get started. So how did this game start off? I started around here. I had a small area where I could actually do things. I had two followers. And what happens is you, there's a rock right in the way of you building your first house. So you click on the rock a few times, as I will do with this tree. So you click it, it sort of gets punched and shrinks down punched and shrinks down, and then disappears and gives you some of this pink resource that I'll explain in a moment. Uh, your people will then go and build this hut. This is actually the hut. It's still here. I haven't deleted it or anything yet. I will soon. Um, so they build this hut, and then you get an extra person, because there's three spaces for people in those buildings, and you only started off with two people. And that means you get an expansion. And your ring of influence grows and you can start put, uh, opening up more space to put yet more of these huts down. And as your numbers of people grow, your area of influence grows and uh, you start being able to do more and more outside, like further out away from your original starting point. Um, now, as you grow, you will also receive other cards. Now, these cards are described here. Let's go up open up the book um, these cards are described here so uh, these are the ones that I've got active at the moment that I'm searching for but um, hopefully I'll have them soon alright so what I uh, no I want the next page I believe to show you yes there we go okay so um, what I got first was these felt tents card let's bring that up Larger abodes, so that's level 2 houses. So those little huts that you started with were level 1. This hut that you see off to the right here is a level 2. Um, so they have more population and generate more of this pink resource belief. Now, this belief can then be used to sculpt the land to open up yet more space for people. Um, I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Um, but once you've got this card, you don't automatically get the ability to build these these tier 2 huts. What you get is the need to collect um, some resources. In this case, because it's felt tents, you had to collect felt. Now, how do you do that? Well, you find chests, and I'm going to point out a couple of chests, and we'll go digging for a couple in a minute, once I get back to the mainland, having shown you all of the very basics. Um, so, uh, yeah, so once you've gotten the felt, you can start building these tier 2 houses. Very good, because now you get a little bit more belief than, so 60 over the 15 of the small houses, and you can start sculpting land a little bit more. Um, yeah, so sculpting land is left click and drag, or double left or double right click. So double right click goes down, double left click goes up from where your mouse is. Now, why are you doing that? You're trying to clear space for these plots to start occurring. So, let's, uh, yeah, so let's, if this land was actually a little bit like this a minute ago, so I've just pushed it out, you get a plot turn up, and it tells you there, you can't actually see it properly because it's a white number on yellow sand, but that is a level one plot. So, what you do to build that is you get a person come out. Now, clicking on a house to get a person to come out, uh, first off, they need to have this little flag at uh, full mast um, to tell you that they've got a worker available. The house is full. There is a worker in residence. Uh, and then they can come out if you, like, click on the house and it costs you a small amount of belief. But generally, at the same time you get a full worker, you'll also get belief. So you can click once, collect the belief, click twice, and the person comes out. There we go. So now they're building this house. Um, 
Uh, the first few houses only take like a minute each to build. These next set of houses, obviously that's been going for a little while and now is going to take a minute to build. So they're fairly tricky to build up. But anyway, so what you what you do is as your population increases, and that is pretty much the main goal early on, you're, you're looking for them chests, but you're also building up population. You eventually, your influence spreads out over here and you find a shrine. And these shrines will also give you new cards, but these cards don't just contain um, the uh, initial like res um, like text that you need to get or the resources. They also contain god powers. So if I go over here, this is my mainland bit that I, you eventually reach, and I'll deal with that big old shrine thing over there in a moment. So if we um, if we go, I want to move this totem, and I move it there. Now, the first time you do that, it will already have activated, but here I need to activate it. So, if I do that, now what happens, if I get the people out of these buildings, by clicking on them, boom, boom, boom. I've now got three workers sitting at my totem, and I can now move that totem. Right-click it over there, and all of the people that were attached to that totem originally will move to it. Doesn't matter how far away you put it, except for the fact that many of them may die in the journey if it's a long one. Um, but it will also collect the new people that are surrounded by it. Then you deactivate the totem, and they will start doing the building jobs. Now, if there are people to punch nearby, they will quite happily punch them normally. So if you're fighting a war, you don't need to deactivate the totem every time you want them to actually do some fighting. Um, so that's one of your god powers. Another one that I can't use at the moment because it's a little bit too costly is uh, things like Statue of Speed. What this does is it turns one of your buildings into a Statue of Speed, which means that your uh, followers move faster, uh, which could be useful if used correctly. Um, also, Finger of God is another god power you can use to squash followers or unbelievers if you're fighting a war or buildings if you want to just get rid of a building um now if you wanted to get rid of a building normally what you could do is just drag out there you go and it starts getting destroyed obviously it doesn't get fully destroyed instantly so if you make a mistake and you click and drag and you end up being uh in the position where you go no 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 i wanted the house the house was i i wanted that there no don't do it um you can, if you're quick enough, undrag. You'll get back the belief from dragging. Um, if you haven't released your mouse cursor yet, which is always nice. Um, and then um, the house will start to rebuild. And as you can see there, it won't be damaged to the people inside. So it will still be a full house. They'll still have workers available. Now, my personal favorite method for... Um, uh, sculpting is actually the double click because the double click is slightly faster it's not as efficient in terms of belief because if the computer flickers if it can't make up its mind what you want to do it doesn't give you the belief back if you're if it undoes a thing that you just did and wanted to do so you can't accidentally keep undoing and redoing things um it just sort of goes well i've taken your belief away it isn't an undo because you let go of the mouse because you double clicked. Um, but I like it because it doesn't destroy buildings. And you can go down below the level currently available to you. So uh, here I'm just going to dig a bit of a hole. So if I right click, double right click, hole goes out, hole goes out, hole goes out. Now there was no level below this available. Oh look, now there's a level below. Double left click, fills up that hole. Boom. There we go. Oh yeah. Look at that, look at that, no hole. It's like it never happened. And then I can click and drag this space out and eventually make it into a bigger home. If I move this out as well, this should be it. There we go, yeah. So you get a level two house by just building enough space, basically. Um, right then, I think that most of the real basics um, which I've gone through faster than the last time I tried to recall this, which is amusing. Now, the chests that have the resources in them that you need in order to build up your 
um, empire, civilization thing. Um, how can you tell where they are? They are these confetti-like things. Now, you can see a few of them. There's a few more over up my top left as well. Now, I am actually going to have to destroy this house, unfortunately. Fortunately, there's a plot right there for the people to move right into. So I am going to click and drag, destroy this house, and you can already see the top of the chest there. Oh, um, camera controls, WASD to move, and then shift, A and D to rotate. Right, okay, so the house has been fully destroyed, and all the little people come running out, running out, running out. Right, let's go around this way a little bit, so that we can be zoomed in. There we go. But not have that obnoxious shrine get in our way. Right then. So now I double right click, double right click on the on the chest. So it'll open up as far as it needs to go until you get there we go, down to it. Boom. Left click, chest. Now what did I get? Did I get no I got felt, okay. I'm looking for flint because if I can get two flints, I can get settlement, which massively increases your ability to um collect belief because it basically uh, puts all of the belief oh yeah and your people fall down if you move the land underneath them. Yeah. Um, it collects all the belief of a of an area in one building, so you don't have to worry too much about uh, having gone and uh, clicked on all of the buildings. So yeah, uh, I think that's the, the real absolute basics. Uh, you can if you're running low on belief, you can double click on things like stones and trees, or triple click, and you will get some belief out of each of them. Uh, obviously, the biggest belief is going to come from your followers, uh, at least in their really good houses. Well, I say really good. Their second level of houses. Um, Right, I'm also going to tell you slightly about what's going on with this thing, but I'm going to release another video in a moment um, where I actually go through what happened. So now this is the battle arena, or at least one of them. We believe there will be more because 5 out of 20 sounds like a bit of a tutorial into, you know, fighting a decent fight, I think. Um... So yeah, you'll get you'll be matched up against AIs um, at least initially uh, for the first 20 matches. That is, um, there's a little bit of a story that goes on along with it. People who talk to you, we're pretty sure they're based on people Peter Molyneux knows. Like I think the first person you fight is we. I was discussing this with a, a friend of mine who actually worked at Lionhead for a little while, and he was like, "I'm pretty sure that's the name of Peter Molyneux's niece." So we think he's put family members and that in the game. Um, but yeah, but don't isolate this point completely because you'll have people come out of it. Um, when you win uh, certain things, you'll have, say, uh, um, I think the wild man lives here. Yeah, there he is. So this is the wild man. You'll get him in one of your first fights. Um, he is different sort of person to you to your tribe um, and he has different bonuses uh, so as he intermingles with your people your people will gain um, par partially the bonuses that he has um, which I think is pretty co a pretty cool way of doing it so as you build up your civilization it all inks intermingles and you end up with uh, a fairly highly buffed Civ as long as you do it right um, now, you can see him running around there, building up a house. Um, you will also get some of your defeated foes come to live with you. So here is one of those people. B. Plimmer is uh, the second person you'll fight. So that is their avatar. She comes out, starts building up another house. Boom. Um, you will also, in certain situations, get back the followers that you built up during the battles. So, have a bit of an, a space available to uh, to house these new people when you do fight a fight. Right, I think that's pretty much...
and unfortunately my mic decides that it wants to turn off random. Well, at least I realised that it did it this time, as opposed to talking to thin air for about five minutes, as I did the last time I tried to record this. So as you can see, uh, I recently uh, had enough people to get a land expansion, and I'm going to need to go through all of this area, uh, collect all of the um, uh, chests, and then start setting it out for building. And I'm going to do that, uh, and then I'm going to go off and fight a battle and show you guys how the battles work. So, uh, yeah, stick around for more goddess coverage. I'm going to be uh, trying to not give too many spoilers, but if I think an episode is spoiler heavy, I will say so at the start. This was obviously just, you know, basic controls, how the game works, that sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, uh, keep your eyes open. Um, I should also say, in case I'm not allowed to put this up, just tell me. If if anyone from 22 can sees this and goes, wow, he's he's violating NDA. I didn't realise because there was nothing popped up when I opened up the game, and I assumed there would be if there if it was under NDA. But as it's on um, uh, Steam at the moment, I assume I'm fine. But yeah. I'm willing to take it down, just tell me. Um, I figured I should get that out of the way in case someone tried to sue my arse off. But then again, he's British, not a Yank, so his first portal call will probably be to call me and go, dude, don't do that, as opposed to going, I am going to sue you. Um, anyway, joking aside, I think, uh, I think that's all I really need to impart, at least at this stage. I will try and give you guys some more hints and tips if you're looking for them if not if you want to discover it by yourselves i might just sort of do every now and again my thoughts on how the game's going and that sort of thing give you an overview of how my civilization is doing uh, as you can see we're sort of clustered around this cliff face here uh, i kind of want to expand further inland um yeah, there's actually a few things that I haven't discussed that I think are pretty cool and will be cooler later once I've figured out how to use them properly. Uh, and once I do do that, I will, like like I say, give spoiled review, uh, spoiled um, tutorials, as it were. There we go. Kill that wolf. Um, but uh, yeah, I will say that this is a spoiler in case you guys want to go off and discover it by yourself. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. And I'm going to tell you all to have a good one.